Hey, thanks for watching CNN 10. Our daily 10 minute shows are on pause for the summer, but we will be posting clips like this Monday through Friday until our regular programming resumes in August. So please enjoy, and to get notified of our content, please like and subscribe to this channel and keep up with us at CNN10.com. We must limit global temperatures rise to 1.5 degrees. 1.5 degrees. 1.5 degrees. To 1.5 degrees Celsius. 1.5 is now universally agreed. A temperature rise of 1.5 degrees doesn't sound like much, but for our planet, it can have dramatic consequences for the landscape, ecosystems, and even our bodies. There's no threshold at which things go from safe to being disastrous. Things just get worse as the temperature increases. Behind me here, we have a simple graphic representing the changes in global temperature since 1850. It's made up of billions of individual measurements of a thermometer made by tens of thousands of people. It's 172 coloured stripes, one for every year. And after the 1970s, we see a very rapid change in colour from oranges to very dark reds, highlighting how quickly things have changed over the last 40 or 50 years. The consequences in a warmer world are more extreme heat waves. As the temperatures increase, heat waves get hotter. And in many regions, that will be increased risk of wildfires, especially if that area is getting drier. Global temperature rise and consequently heat waves don't affect all regions the same. The planet is warming fastest in the Arctic than most other regions, in the northern higher latitudes. It's warming faster over land than over the ocean, and in some regions like South Asia, intensifying heat waves are testing the limits of human survivability. These are the regions that have the fastest growing population, and so the impacts of that could be immense. We are really concerned about India, Pakistan at the moment because of the increase in this deadly combination of humidity and air temperature. Humidity inhibits our ability to sweat, which means we don't cool down as quickly. And so there's just a buildup of temperature inside, and that means our vital organs can't function properly. In the US, the National Weather Service says heat kills more people each year on average than any other weather-related event. The CDC says the elderly, children, and those with chronic diseases are at the highest risk of heart-related illness. As temperatures rise, so does the likelihood of climate migration, as people flee regions that are simply too hot to live in. And heat is felt profoundly in urban centres due to the lack of green spaces. Buildings, concrete or asphalt roads, these absorb the sun's energy and then radiate heat. Parks, rivers and grassy areas, they absorb less. It's very important to put in place adaptations like nature-based solutions and cooling and action plans for heat waves. But some of the existing cooling solutions, like air conditioning, are actually driving energy demands, which for most countries means an increase in the use of fossil fuels. Ultimately, the solution lies in cutting greenhouse gas emissions, like carbon dioxide, by dramatically reducing, even ending, the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas. If we want to stabilise the planet's temperature to halt global warming, then we need to reduce our emissions to net zero. If we continue as we are, then we'll cross this 1.5 degree number in the next decade or two. The future is in our hands. Our choices over the coming decades will determine how warm the planet will get. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter at CNN10.com and we'll see you in August for daily episodes of CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus.